Welcome to the Seraphine Podcast. I'm Serafina Rocha, and today we are interviewing Miss Lynette Sierra. Hello. Hello. This is um, unique because our paths have crossed several times, and the first time I met you, I was completely drawn to you, and there was a gentleman at the time that you were dating, and he was like under a spell. I mean, the way he spoke about you was, was um, I don't know, I, I loved it because I like to hear when someone describes the person that they're dating or they're spending time with, and the words he used were not typical of this gentleman. And they were, they were big words, they were um, emotional words, and he was speaking in a way that was so connected to a feminine energy that it blew my mind because even though he in and of self is is you know he's kind of a he's he gives you the impression that he's a guy you know yeah. guy's guy there was just something that i guess energetically he had connected with you and i just saw another side to him so now I get to sit across from you, and it's so interesting because Giovanna, who is my brand manager, um, she and I started working together, and I come to her a lot of times for ideas for who could be another podcast guest because she's got such a great infrastructure of people and a network of people, and she brought up you, and I was like, no way, and she's like, I'm actually working with her. I was like, who knew? So... I'm so curious because this is going to be a little bit more of me learning about you um, and all the questions I've been kind of wanting to know about you. So we're going to start out with first um, a little background okay. I mean, because you've got an interesting background. Yes, it's kind of complex and mysterious and everything. I was born in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. Brooklyn, New York. And when I was teenage about 13 years of age we moved to South America so my found founding years being in New York gave me a lot of wanting to know what's out there because the city itself is just this like buzzing energy and I just I was in love with the city I was I never felt afraid I felt like I'm gonna be somebody I, I just had this urge to want to be a part and curious of other cultures I lived in between the Hasidic Jewish neighborhood and Irish and Italian even though I was a Latin part Latino we never wanted to live in the Latin neighborhood because my stepdad didn't like the drama so we <laughs> were more in a between the Jewish and the Irish it, it, there wasn't a lot of drama it was more like you can concentrate so I, when I lived there, it was just, I look, I think about it and it makes me, it brings up a lot of emotions because it's like that little girl that always was hopeful about everything and yeah. wanting to connect with people. And I was also raised Jehovah's Witness. So being a Jehovah's Witness in a city like that, where that was a headquarters, it's a kind of a whole different energy versus when I went to Ecuador and we were the ones that started the, a new kingdom hall there because there were no Jehovah's Witness. Wow. So so there was a lot of so much going on. It's like being a Jehovah's Witness, wanting to also read the my horoscope, which I would hide from my mom. I was like, I would get the Vogue magazine, I remember. And I would want to know like the sign, but she would say, well, you can't read that, that's bad. But I always was drawn to astrology at a very early age, even though I was Jehovah's Witness. That was like my my taboo, my hidden. <laughs> That's so curious. So I, I'm so, because again, when you, you run, I, I, my, my husband is Panamanian part and he's got Irish in the back and like in the other side, I think about like, the blood that's in your veins is it just, it, it's just passionate by, by generations and generations of, of just people and culture. It's undeniable. But then you're in this very kind of stoic, very, um, the, the neighborhood, like when, I, I mean, I lived in New York. I know the, that, that, that the, Hasidic, the Hasidic area. And then Irish culture can get a little passionate, but it's very clicky. Um, so did you feel at a young age already like, uh, kind of like, 
dressed up in a different outfit, like Always. and feeling like like inside it was just a whole nother person? Well, at the time I didn't know that I had Capricorn rising. Now uh. that I know your rising is the armor you put on to face the world. So uh. Capricorn is very it's reserved. It's like I got it together. Mm -hmm. It's very formal, traditional. You don't want to rock the boat. You could have all this drama inside, but it has to be contained. Uh -huh. Because everybody looks at you, it's like, wow, you got it together. But they don't know the underneath of the emotions. So I uh, was always a chameleon. So I could, knowing now with human design, open G, I could be a different person with different people. That doesn't mean I'm two-faced. It just means that I'm able to tap in mm -hmm. to what's going on around me and be that for that day. And it's okay. So at an er not knowing the tools that I have now, yes, it was a little, it was confusing. There was a lot of pressure. That's so interesting because I think a lot about, I, I did a interview with just a few people um, that we were doing LGBTQ month and kind of talking to a few people who were like, I'm, I'm one way, but I feel another way. Mm -hmm. And then you move to South America at a very, like 13 is a, yeah. It's like your your hormones, your feelings, your emotions are there. And then you're going to introduce a religion to a culture. And I'm sure the responsibility, even though, correct me if I'm wrong, Jehovah's Witnesses spend, it's, it's very masculine, it's very patriarchal. But the responsibility of women is still very much like you have to support the elders no yes. matter what. So describe being at that age and how long you were in South America and, and bringing the, the word of the Jehovah's Witness to the... So it was interesting. My mom, third generation Jehovah's Witness, at the time when she married my stepdad, he's Catholic. Okay. So he was a non-believer. She did that when she kind of took a, a break from mm -hmm. the J JW. So she was estranged. So she wouldn't have done that. You have to marry someone. It's best. So he always allowed and held space for that. He was very supportive. He donated the land. When we got there, it was different because the culture, um, Galapagos belongs to Ecuador. They can be very reserved, uh, very Catholic. Everybody's Catholic there. So uh, it was a different, it's like some people agree you got some resistance and some are curious because it's something new and mm -hmm. they're bored. I mean, there's there's there isn't any fast food or movie theater at the time so i went from the busiest city in the world to a place where at midnight lights off because the generators they didn't have to sustain electricity so it was just going back into time and then meeting this whole family that even though i was his stepdaughter he embraced me like his own daughter they were one of the founding families of the island so every half the island is related to my stepdad and That's why so it was just living there it was it was like a paradise you could leave the door open it was just like chill but at the same time there's a lot of innocence yeah so it went from there uh, to that it was it was like for me it was exciting because something new yeah so so you were there for how long until when what brought you back to the states I would always come back in the summer because we had a house in Brooklyn. We kept the house, so I would come back, and my I had a brother. Uh, my brother at the time stayed, older brother in New York. So we would come back, and when I was nineteen, I wanted to go to college so bad. Mm -hmm. But Jehovah's Witnesses, not that they ban going to college, but they are like, you know, the end is coming. So don't s plant, you know, seeds now. Yeah. wait for Armageddon to come in the new world. So they're focused more on delivering the word. Uh -huh. So, and, but I, I was like, I want to go to school. I want to go to NYU because I wanted to be on the news and be like interviewed. Like yeah, this. yeah. And I remember my best friend at the time, she was like, her parents allowed her to go. She was Jehovah's Witness. So wow. I was angry. I was like, why can I go to school? So instead I got married. Wow. And, and I was in love at the time, but when I look back, it was like, the freedom of like, well, if I can't go to college and I'll get married. Yeah. And so I met someone at a party. Um, I'll never forget. It was a gathering in Brooklyn Heights and he asked me to dance all American. Go to like yeah. from, from yeah. Springfield. Yeah. And we met and then um, 
we hit it off and then we went our own ways. And then a year later, the next summer I went by, I go to a party and I meet his brother. Wow. And it's like, you remind me, I already knew he, I said, do you have a brother? He goes, yeah. And it was his brother. He goes, actually, he is coming to visit me. And we reconnected and we started dating and then we got married. That's so interesting. <laughs> so that's how then I left and I was, brought, I, we, I went to Texas to live at the time. Wow. So again, it's so, I love to hear stories of when one door is closed, like no school, no education. Women a lot of times look for the escape of the relationship, like, okay, I, no more parents, but now, you know, I'm going to create my own family. So when you entered into this marriage and you're, and he was a Jehovah's Witness as well, um, Talk to me about what changed, because again, these are probably in your early 20s, right? That you I were- I was almost 20. Yeah. And he was four, four years older. Interesting. And you guys were together for seven years, is that right? Yes. So what what transpired in the seven years? And you've talked to me outside of the, the podcast room <laughs> of seven being very transitional in numbers. Mm -hmm. What is it about seven years that makes it like not 10? And then also what happened to you in those seven years? So I was still a baby now looking back and he was too, but every seven years your cells renew. Mm -hmm. It's like you sh feel like you have a new opening of resetting and starting over. So they there's a saying called the seven year itch too in yeah. marriage and you either yeah. make it or yeah. not. I think that's where they got yeah. that from. Yeah. Um, he, when I was married, it was great. It was the American family oh. that I had never known about. We did a lot of road trips. I got to travel Colorado's favorite state. I got to see the world, the rest of the U.S., because New York, a lot of people stay in New York and never leave. Yes. They don't even know what's going on. Yeah. Midwest, they think, oh, cows and farm, and that's it. Or, yeah. And I, I loved it. It was like a different, he showed me a different side of a different culture which I embraced he's Polish Irish and it was great but at one point I kind of outgrew that yeah and it wasn't that he did anything wrong I just realized I don't want to be in this religion mm -hmm. so Saturn that was when Saturn hit my chart I didn't know that then but when Saturn comes back around from the day you're born between 28 and 30 years it's like all of a sudden you're like what am I going to do with my life because Saturn is the tactile shift <laughs> planet, right? The father. Yeah. Saturn is represents the foundation. It represents government, the law, karma. Yeah. So all of a sudden, I was like, I just didn't want to be in this. I didn't want to necessarily be divorced, but he wouldn't have it. He wasn't open to it. And he was angry. I was scared, but mm -hmm. I did it anyway. I remember I was happy because I was like, I'm starting a new chapter. What was it like leaving a religion and a marriage almost simultaneously. It was like having it, getting a new identity, like yeah. getting in, in yeah. a program where they protect. Yeah. I lost all my friends from childhood that I had. So, I'm very social and I love meeting people. And I literally had to, it was like a reset. Everybody, I was estranged from even my family. Like it was like, wow. So, but I was not afraid. And I think the, the, what I felt inside the curiosity and the love of like of being hopeful, like mm -hmm. there's something out there, like that was a chapter that ended. Let's see what else is coming. And that's when I took time for me um, to get to know me, uh -huh. which most people do that in their twenties. I kind of did things backwards, but again, I was conditioned to believe a certain thing and that's what led me to the choices I did then. Did you come up with it on your own or were you ever exposed inadvertently or, did you have any paths crossed with people who struck your curiosity of like, there's more? Because I do believe when I lived in California, I had two friends who were Scientologists and um, they talked a lot about um, just this sense of just being so curious of like why I, I would, why I had so many questions about something that was so rock solid. And like, and I remember, um, seeing one of my friends maybe eight years later and she she did uh, disconnect from Scientology and they're brutal I mean they're brutal they will make sure that you will never ever have any association 
what do you think it is about religion? And for me, I, I really do believe it's cult-like behavior, but that that disconnection, um, why they need to disconnect so hard, and then how why they make it so hard to be exposed inevitably to other people who are going to be like, what the hell? I think it's fear-based. It's yeah. a control tactic. It's like you can't. It's like someone that feeds you a story and you have to believe it and then you can't question anything because when you start questioning, mm -hmm. then there's doubt and you start like rocking the boat. So everybody that when you're in that religion, you don't have time to think about other options because you're busy. Like I dedicate 120 hours a month at one point in my life. That's so insane. The thing is, I, I guess not insane. <laughs> you're insane. But I do understand that sense of like wanting to, to show up for whatever it is you believe in. But where, uh, I guess it goes back to the question I got sidetracked in asking was, were you exposed to anyone or, or any ideas or was it something that was just within you? That it was wanted? within me. It was, uh, going back to that, I had wanted still to go to college. We had been married five years. We lived in a small town in Texas, East mm -hmm. Texas. And I wanted to go to this community college because there was a dance team, the Rangerettes, uh -huh. which the high kick and the red yes, lipstick. And totally. I always, I love ballet and tap and dance, but I couldn't be a Rangerette because you had to be single. You can't be married. But I took all the classes anyway. And somehow at the time, my husband was like, you know, fine, go to school. So I was able to complete two years. And that started awakening. I was like, oh, this is, you know, yeah. going to school. And I felt like, you know, I was married. I was like, no, this is so freeing. It's like that freedom, my spirit. It's like a hummingbird energy yeah. that I, my soul, that's what I identify with, that bird, because I just want to be free. It's not to go do anything wrong. It's just I want to experience life and what it has to offer. I don't want to be restricted. So the more I went to school and I graduated, it was a 4.0 GPA. I made it to the dean's wow. list, and I was like, this is great. And then I find out I'm pregnant. So then that also <laughs> shifted, because I wasn't planning on having kids at the time, because I... So I was on birth control and then got pregnant. I was like, okay, so the universe is sending me, you know. Yeah. So then I say, okay, I'll stay. And then eventually it doesn't stick, but it was the school, going to school that kind of awakened in me. And then, then did you return back to school after the marriage ended? Or did you, or did you, what did you do next? I went, so while I was married, I, going through the divorce, I was working at a dental office and I speak Spanish and I was helping and doing that. And I decided to go back. I took some classes, but I didn't feel, I think it was, there was so much change that I couldn't process at the time. Like, what do I really want to do? There was confusion in of that course, too. Yeah. I, I had this um, energy of like, wow, there's so much I want to do, but yet, where do I begin? Yeah. Kind of, and I, my Mercury is in Gemini, so Gemini is air element. So it's like you want to conquer everything and then jack of all trades and master, master of none. none. Right, right. So yeah. I dabbled into this and that and like I've had, I just wanted to experience whatever came my way. Yeah. So I, yes, I went back. I went to different schools. I took some class UMKC, but the Art Institute is where I stayed the longest and really loved that um, and what that represented and the energy there. Because I'm big on energy. If it doesn't feel right, many times in the past, I would still push through because I thought, well, it's the right thing to do. Anymore, I don't. If it doesn't feel right, I'm not going to do it. So financially, was it tough at this time? Or were you like working a lot? Because it, I can only imagine. It was because he yeah. provided. It was the old Jehovah's Witness kind of like yeah. to stay at home. And yeah. I ha we had a beautiful house in Westwood, nice neighborhood. Yeah. I moved into a, a little apartment on the plaza. I was so happy. I didn't care. I didn't think about money. Isn't it funny how I, uh, same thing with me. I've, I, I can't tell you how many times I've been in a very safe situation and just just jump ship and everyone was always like and i would get i would leave everything from furniture to the man's heart on the floor and, i mean i was i was almost um i was always very sure when i needed to leave and when i wanted to go um but i it's so interesting there's only been maybe two times in my life where i've been scared like I, I knew I had to jump ship, 
And I thought I knew I, what I was doing. And then as soon as the door closed, I was like, <gasps> you know. So you strike me as somebody who is contemplative before you would exit a situation where I'm like very much like, I'm done, you know, and you, you're, you're jumping out, you're parachuting. Um, and most of the times I would land on my feet, but there was a few times where I rolled my ankle and <laughs> busted a shoulder. It's, it could be scary. Yeah. Yeah, for me it was like knowing what I know now about my design, my incarnation cross is called the incarnation cross of uncertainty. So what's an incarnation cross to That's educate what, our viewers? When you're born in, in human design, you have astrology, you have the planets in position, mm -hmm. you have um, the chakra system mm -hmm. plays in part, and then the cross picks out where the sun, the position of the sun, so my sun is in Taurus, so it is in a gate or um, in, he in the hexagram, the I Ching. So let's say my sun is in gate eight, mm -hmm. so that means um, I have a contribution. I'm here to contribute to the world. And then my earth is in 14, which is resources. It's about there will always be resources, never to worry about money. And then that's in my personality, in my body, my unconscious side, 88 days before you're born, that's uh -huh. when you have your blueprint. I have the 55 and the 59. Those four numbers make up 70% of what your profile is the most important. It's your life theme, okay. what you're here to do. So they take your unconscious sun and your conscious sun, earth, uh, unconscious and conscious. And that creates a story. Those gates talk about, they have, the Chinese have different themes, uh, that kind of don't associate with it's kind of like fire over water and you're like well what does that mean yeah. but if you there's a lot of tools out there and resources that people that have dissected that and breaking it down this is what it means mm -hmm. so i am here to help people understand that life is not a mystery to be solved that there is no the, the uncertainty is not a bad thing because we want to be certain of so many things but yet at the end of the day what are we really certain of i mean that we're going to die for yes. sure. Well, we're dying right now. <laughs> I know that for sure. And so. I think that that's so interesting because, again, coming from Jehovah's Witness, which the ideology behind it is your it's doomsday. Like yes. you, you are planning for doomsday. So how were you introduced to first going into anything that has to do with astrology, numerology. Um, for me, I mean, I've, I have the yoga background, so the chakras have been yeah. something I've dove into. How how did you first, in, where were you first introduced to it and where, where did the calling come? So it came usually with relationships. He's so cute. He's like, the calling <laughs> came behind my mother. I love it. Having my emotions I always think of the planets have actors uh -huh. and the, the sign it's in is the role you play. So the actor, the moon is your emotions and being in Libra, relationship is everything for Libras, yeah. whether it's business, love. So that's a big theme for me. Like, who am I? Who am I a part of? So I remember getting a reading from someone. I love reading. And that's when it started because yeah. I wanted to know you always want to know, like, is this relationship going somewhere? Or what is this? Is this my soulmate? And then I just started, like, I can find out myself. And being the card of Queen of Clubs, I later understand I'm the mother of intuition. The moment I get aligned with my spirituality, that doesn't mean a religion. It's when I really tap into who I am. Because mm -hmm. I'm always, like, high strung and wanting to do all this. But then I'm not in my body. Yeah. I have I a lot that. of air elements, so I'm like high flying disc and I'm like sometimes you gotta get grounded. So for me it was it was the tangible of what we live. I never was like, that's too boring. I really wanna be out, you know. Yeah. Experience. You wanna be out there and experience it. <laughs> you know, I think the thing that's so interesting I'm sorry, I'm it's okay. I'm, I'm having a moment with with Ace, what are you saying? We need to do his yeah. chart. You do need to do this guy's chart. <laughs> when was he born? He's, seriously. Is this, he a Leo? No. He probably is. I mean, the guy is hilarious. He, he, he'll he have like little fits in the back, and I'm like, what are you doing back there? But they're funny dogs, uh, French bulldogs <laughs> with the smudgy faces. And Anyway, so I, I'm curious because when you go into 
I mean, you you had a banking background, right? Yes, initially, we, right? Well, I've done many things. Yes. I um, I was working. I worked at Halls. I worked for Bond Number no. Nine. Oh, it was a yeah. fragrance. So yeah. I worked for the vendor directly. And another, when she interviewed me, she interviewed me by my handwriting. So I found that very fascinating. Oh, I want to be a part of this company. She's from Lebanon. She goes, write me a paragraph and send it to me, and then I'll tell you if you're hired. And I was like, okay. And a good friend of mine at the time was working, and she would always say, girly, girly, just write, just do your handwriting, and then you'll get hired, don't worry. And they did. They hired me. But I then I was like, oh, I want to go study that. So anytime I got any little bit of something different, I would go down the rabbit hole and then master it. That's, yeah. oh, I'm going to learn that and I'm going to learn this. So that's how I started. It was a tarot and then astrology, the handwriting. Then I met um, someone from Miami that was a lawyer and left her career as a lawyer to become a feng shui. Yeah. And I was like, you left she goes oh yeah Libra I have a thing with (laughs) and she studied with this guy Joey Yap and he's like to me the best guy out there for anything esoteric in the Chinese so then I started doing the Bazi chart not so much feng shui but learning like the day you were born Uh and what not only the year everybody knows probably the year but you have to know the month the day the hour because it represents their different pillars So then I went down that rabbit hole. So then I just was learning anything coming my way. I was like a garbage disposal. Meanwhile, doing the work, you know, working as a generator, being a worker, be uh, bartending. I worked at halls and then I started real estate and I loved, I worked for the number one team, (laughs) Kathy Kaler. Everybody knows. He's like, hello, pretty lady. That team and I worked with them and then and then something happened that changed my life. I met someone, uh-huh. which I knew I should not. My intuition was like, not, but I went anyway. Uh-huh. And then um, when I ended up, I, then I found out I was pregnant. It was like one of those things that no matter if I'm on birth control or not. not that's yeah, no. <laughs> it's, just, it's just the powers that be were like, no. So this baby was coming regardless. So I was showing, I was working in real estate, doing really well. And I remember I was showing a house and this guy, I was talking about astrology. He's like, you know, you need to get into human design. And I was like, what? It was 2013 is when. He goes, it changed my life forever. My son had addiction problems. My son was lost and I had my other daughter. And it changed our life, our dynamic as a family, what we're here to do, how to use your energy, how do you contribute to the world. So then I dabbled into that, but I didn't pay attention. It was like my first kind of exposure. When things got bad in the relationship, when I, I would say that's when I hit my rock bottom, like Uh to the core, like, I was like, what is this? Then I started going into that and opening because it takes seven years to decondition. Interesting. So I found that in 2013. Then a year later, a friend of mine invited me to a dinner. And that guy Uh that I had met a year before was there. That's crazy. And she wanted to introduce to human design. And I had. Interesting. (laughs) So it's synchronicity. It's like, okay, at the time, sometimes you get downloads or you get the universe sends you information and you're not ready for it. It's yeah. it's like, you just like, you're not paying attention. <laughs> What's the difference between, so for instance, I have a mother and I have sisters who love, they love tarot card reading, they love astrology, they love, they love anything to do with a horoscope, but you take it to another level. So describe human design and what's different from the average person who, not average, because I think it's pretty <laughs> exceptional to know how to read a tarot deck and, and really hone into your intuition and insight. But what with human, like again, when I think about that, like what is the difference between the two? Well, the difference, it's not really a belief system. It's not a religion. It's not like, oh, you need to, it's not a cult. It's, it's just, giving you it's very individual it's an individual journey Uh so whenever you come into human design you get this funky chart that you're like what is this so breaking it down there's a lot of people now into it that can explain it and then give you the tools and then you have to apply it 
it's an individual. There's no person holding you by the hand saying, okay, do this and that. I mean, you could have like a coach guide you. So human design takes you like your fingerprint is so unique. It's like there is no other person like you and your strategy. Like when I met you, I knew you were a projector. And I had a feeling you had a second line because I could, I, now that I'm doing this, I can like get like, it's who you are. And sometimes you're not aware of that. So it's figuring out who you really are and who you're not. Because most people think they know who they are and they're walking around thinking, but they're really not really thinking. It's just like on autopilot, just going through life, going to college, working. But they, do we really ever have an opportunity to stop and think, okay, what am I here for? What are my shadows, basically? What am I, what's my potential? Because mm -hmm. it's like a, a potential. That doesn't mean that, that some people can have a great chart and not do anything with it. Yeah. Because maybe they have a lot of issues from when they were a child and they haven't done the work. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of layers, but it basically gives you a guide on how you show up for you and how to respond to life energetically. So you created your company, Tribal Venus, about five years ago, is that correct? Yes, in so one of my rabbit hole moments, I was like, I wanna buy this domain and I'm gonna do something one day. <laughs> so if you were going to, um, I don't know, uh, if you're going to describe it and describe how it's evolved from five years ago to now, um, talk me through what the company was, the idea behind it when you began, and what it's evolved to now. So the idea when I first started was astrology-based oh. only, and kind of Venus, uh, being a child of Venus, I have Taurus and Libra, which is ruled by Venus, is about love and money, and most people worry about love and money, so I thought... This is great, and I love tribal because I like African tribal religion too, and I like different cultures. So at the time, I was like, maybe I could have like an e-commerce store and sell some stuff, yeah. and then and do some readings, but nothing like what it is now. I then realized I had my own journey. Being a six two is being a role model, but being a role model for me. It's not about the other. So it was more a journey for me. So even though I had that name, I kind of put it aside and I went through a lot of different um, things that happened because it's not that I wasn't ready. It's just I was trying to get to know what my purpose was. Yeah. Because it's so many layers of... Isn't it funny, <laughs> though, when you have a brainchild of something and you... You never know, like when I, I, I talk about this podcast all the time of what I thought it was going to be and then what it manifested into, especially during the time that I started it, because I started it right at the front of COVID. We're in a world of social upheaval with George Floyd, Breonna Taylor. We also have the election coming up. These are major stressors. And I feel like we're all in these confined spaces we have masks covering our mouth um it's really a time where our cages are rattled and if i am going to go inward um now's the time because i'm i'm alone with myself more often than not so when i think about learning about anything that has to do with me as a human being i would think that right now people would be really drawn to what you can teach them and and also addressing some underlying, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm in EMDR right now. I'm in like the hardcore therapy of addressing trauma. So I would think that it's a little less horoscopy and it's a lot more like, all right, I need to know why I am a nervous wreck or why I am emotionally detached or why I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like I need to, to dig a little deeper into my history and, and, and why I, I feel this need to do better in the world. Cause karmatically, you know, I look at my, we're all in this like headspace now of being faced with ourselves. So I would think that if we get a good look in the mirror, yeah. <laughs> we might need someone to help us through looking at all all there is to look at for me there's a lot of lines and decrepitness that i'm like fuck so who's coming to you now do you do, have you seen a change in how you are now leading people 
I would say it, it differs. It varies. I have men and women. Mm -hmm. So I kind of feel like everybody that is going into, they feel like there's a lot of chaos in the world. And it's interesting you say, like asking a lot of questions, like your design, having that open head, you're always going to ask a lot of questions. The why, I have that. So we're always, it's we want to know the unknown. So if I told you that your head or your mind is not here to help you make decisions, yeah. you'd be like, oh, what does that mean? And then I say, if you drop more in your body, which again, we're taught to think and everything and, and all the social media and we're constantly seeing and then we're processing. So what I'm able, when people come to me, they gain clarity on what their unique strengths are and how they can utilize them. So they don't feel like they are overwhelmed or how they can use and conserve their energy. Because we all have the same hours in the day and the same amount, doesn't matter what you do for work, it's how you utilize your time mm -hmm. and what you wanna do and how do you tap into. Because like I said, going back to the disconnect or if you have trauma, like I'm in therapy myself, because I always think there's always room for growth. We're never, it's not like we have a state of awakening one day and we're like, oh, we've reached. I don't, it, it doesn't exist. I no. Because no. different stages in life is going to bring up different things. Yeah. And your body as well as aging. So you're going to come up, your home. There's so many things. So I find that when people come to me, they just want to know why they're a certain way, uh -huh. how they could break patterns, or they just want to know, like, I'm just curious, like, I just want to know, like, what does it say about me? Because everybody likes to know. Where do you get the most pushback from people? I'm always so, uh, you know, I remember oh. the first time I, the first time I ever got my my chart cards read. Uh, I remember it was, <laughs> I think, in Anaheim, California. Oh my lord! It was at, like at some like this beautiful like restaurant that had all these artisans and they had someone who was doing a tarot reading, another one doing astrology. And I remember the woman just looking at me <laughs> and I was with this guy at the time who was not my husband now. And she was like, you two, I see in your future together, a child, I see and she's like going through this whole line of my future. And I'm like, oh, if you only knew. And then she spoke to me about my chart and gave me kind of the basic Gemini traits. Really failed to go. She went in a little bit of the sun, a little bit of the moon. And then my favorite was there was this moment where she's like, does this, does this sound familiar? Does this, does this feel true? And I looked her in the eye. And I said, yes. And I don't know why, because at the time, maybe I was young, maybe yeah. I just didn't want to create weirdness. And I mean, I paid, I nodded and was like, oh yeah, it all was great. And then I went and I looked at him and I was like, that was a bunch of bullshit. You know, like I cannot yeah. believe it. And I've only had about two or three experiences in my life to where I sat down with someone and I've really felt like, wow. This is like a tapping into. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I have a family that embraces it, loves it. And I always felt like they put their little spin on mm -hmm. it. And then it felt, um, it kind of felt like when you 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 read a very metaphorical book, right? Yes. Or, or, or fantasy book. And everyone kind of gives their, uh, you know, the, the, the people who read it will give their kind of synopsis of it. Or if yes. you watch a very like abstract art film, I think people get really, uh, either they dive into it like a David Lynch Twin Peaks thing of like, oh, well, the dancing midget in the room meant this yeah. versus people now. Um, and I myself, I used to love reading into things, but now I like to challenge people. I, and I, I don't know where the, the confidence came, I think, in as being older. But I guess now with the clientele that you have, because you have, I, I doubt you have very many like young 20-somethings being like, hey, let's do this. I feel like that's so not, it's really at like 30s, 40s, 50s, where people are like, I want to dig mm -hmm. deep. Where, where, what are the, some of the questions or some of the walls people have put up with you? That's interesting. The first, what I wanted to say, blurred out when you say where you get most resistance, I said when I see someone that's a 1-3. Uh. <laughs> because I know they're the anarchists. Yeah. They're here to challenge. They're here, they're the, 
in a house, the metaphor is like they're the foundation. So they're yeah. like, hold on. No, I need to dig deep. Um, Scorpio. So I already know beforehand because I need the information, your time of birth and all that. So I already know before going into the reading what I'm going to get into. I got gotcha. you. Gotcha. And then my open G allows me because wherever I'm open, that's where I can give more wisdom because I'm a mirror to you. Wherever you're open, that's where you um, because I don't have it's like a sponge. That's where you can absorb and see, oh, or tap in. So it's an exchange. Every reading is so different. Uh -huh. I've gotten readings where people, I've had people cry. I've had other people be like, wow, when I talk about like their environment or how they should digest their food even. Mm -hmm. And and they're like, oh, like I had one guy was like, he is sensitive to, to light. And I said, you do best in having the shades up. And he goes, oh my goodness, my wife likes opposite. And they're always like, and so things like that, when you go into detail on a, on a cellular level, like what they kind of, some people are like, then I have other people that just, um, they do not want to accept any part or, or even they're like shut off and yeah. they're just going through, they're not in their body. They're up here yeah. and they're just like going through them. Oh, it's like taking notes. Oh, that's interesting and very and non emotional. But again, everybody digest information differently. So I haven't gotten any pushback. That's good because I, I feel like now more than ever, people need, even if they are a little detached from themselves, I feel like knowledge is power right now. And the more that we learn within ourselves, the better that we can actually be. And yes. the more that I sit down in these podcasts, you know, the, the whole point of this podcast was interviewing people who are pretty exceptional in what they do and learning from them because I'm like, a, I'm hungry for knowledge. I want to learn more and more. And I wanted that excuse to just be a student of life. And then all this craziness happened. And then I realized, well, I want more from the person sitting across from me. So no, this is the ego in me. Like, I'm not only going to pick your brain about what you do, but now I expect you to do more. Like, where, what are you going to do to give back to the community? Because you're so excellent at what you do. Don't you feel a calling? And you know, I've had a few people who have sat across from me and they're at the start, they're at the precipice of like wanting to give back or or evolve in a way that means that they're going to strengthen their community or, or some aspect of the world or or share knowledge that people might. And I love to see the first starts of it. But then I have people who their whole life has been dedicated to giving back in some way. And it sounds like your ideology from the very beginning as a Jehovah's Witness was always about contr contributing to the good of, at that time, the Jehovah's Witnesses. But now it seems like you're now contributing to the collective of humanity. So yes. talk to me about what has awakened in you during this time period and what's changed or strengthened. Right before COVID, I, at the job that I had, they kind of did away with a lot of positions and I remember sitting at the table and some people were crying. They're like, my life is over, like they had been. And I was like, oh my goodness, everything that I wanted. Because I already, this year, being 2020, I already knew with the transit that no matter what you want, you had to change. You had to go and do what you wanted to do. So everything lined up and giving back to me means helping people and I'm even thinking about even teenagers helping families to understand how to even raise their kids because it, it's all dynamics and how to get away from what we're told that things should be because we're told so many stories. Everything is just we're like followers. Yeah. Go to school, go do this, go do that. And at what point are we going to stand up and say, hey, I have a say and this is what I feel and we're a sovereign being and we have the right to have a voice. And that's what's happening with COVID, people are really awakening and saying, wait a minute, do we really believe this? What is, they're questioning a lot. So to me, it's bringing information and helping people, giving them the tools so that they can go and be the best that they can be to contribute. Because you're right about the collective, go giving back. Um, I have, have that always in the back of my head. I think about it like a spirit house, like a spiritual yeah. house where people come together. And it's not only about astrology, it's like body workers and therapists even. I was at the park the other day and I met this psychologist. You know, I knew he was a Libra, the way he was dressed. Okay. You know, everything yeah. in place and he's got his white picket fence, uh -huh. you know, with the kids and he's just so 
And I was like, so what do you do? Oh, I'm, I'm a therapist. And But there was, when I gave him a little bit, he didn't ask for it, but I was like, I'm going to initiate. Yeah. He was like, can I have your number? I, I said, if you implemented this, I gave him some ideas to think outside. Because yeah. it's all like book, textbook. Everybody's following some, it's like, I'm encouraging people to be more creative and really tap into their own genius. Like, what do you have? What's your secret sauce? What's my secret? And like, explore that. But it's your responsibility to figure it out. It really is. And it's funny because I, I do believe we have a set of blueprints that have come with us and our family before. And we, most, most cultures follow their cultural blueprint of what you should do and what your mom did and what yeah. your dad did. And then there is a tactile shift, whether it be like the Great Depression or it be a world war and, 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 and people rising above this blueprint and becoming greater than they ever thought yeah. and, and actually ripping up the blueprint and, and creating something new. I find it so interesting because now more than ever, um, I'm so, I'm interested in the facts of my past, but I'm not interested in the mythology or the storytelling or the, the f you, it's like the, the fish story that the fish just gets bigger and bigger and bigger yes. and families are so good about filling in the blanks. And I find it really interesting how a story that the facts are a little altered um, to suit whoever is comfortable in the room. And then you actually really ask. So the other day, my, my mom was with my grandmother. And my grandmother was showing this picture of my great-grandmother. And she's telling her this story. My grandmother's 97. And my grandmother says to my mother, oh, it's so interesting. She was always like an only child, but she had five brothers. And my mom was like, what? <laughs> And like, I just watched her whole cage get rattled. So apparently my grandmother had five stepbrothers and my mother was just like reacting in this very emotional way. And I, I said to my mom, I go, God, we gotta take a breath. I was like, has it really affected your life one way or the other that you didn't know that you had these, you know, what would they be, step grandfather? I mean, yeah. I don't even know what. I mean, I think about my grandmother. I don't even remember meeting my grandparents' brothers or sisters, yeah. and if I did, I, I can't remember. But it was interesting how there's so much. Uh, there's so much need in certain generations, and I'm seeing it kind of fade out with the baby boomers. Of I need to have this blueprint. I need to know. I need to know all the stories in our family, and this is the way it is. And then, as soon as they look or dig or peel back any layers, it's like their world is completely like turned upside down. Whereas I feel like now, when I think about, I'm Generation X kind of, and um, I, and then into the 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 millennials, and then into what is it, Generation Z? I think is. Yeah. It's so interesting how we're tearing down statues now and we're like mm -mm. who cares this was a racist confederate you know blah yeah. blah blah i don't want that in my town or or um my mom was talking about museums of of the british and how you know they they're 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 they conserve and they they take history and and i have really been challenging my own family about rewriting the script and i would think that uh, in some ways, when you find out this kind of human genetic makeup mi mixed with when you were born and, and how you were raised and, and all the elements, I see a lot of people wanting to hold on to a true north. And I wish, I wish there was a way when people come and seek what you can give them in a way to where they know that the compass can move anyway, like they're in yeah. control. But I think that a lot of times why I have an aversion sometimes to astrology is, well, you're a Gemini, you're always gonna do that. And you're like, yeah. well, wait a second. So so with that being said, what 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 do you, I don't even know how to ask the question, but how how do you interpret 
the chart? And how do you go about discussing things that are very true to the core of that person without making a blueprint for them? You know, because yeah. I think a lot of times you're in therapy and you know that yeah. people are like, yeah. So l going back real quick with the Gemini, the, I always say this to people at the session. I could take someone with your birthday, mm -hmm. year, time in a different city and it pop, something else is going to come up because of the degrees of the planet. So it's very personalized. I can even see someone's core wound. I can see like past life. I could see what they were comfortable with, what they're holding on to. So it's not only human design, because I know about, about astrology, and then I tap into the Chinese. Then there's the Vedic chart. So th I have all these tools that I don't really tell people because the tools don't really matter. It's, so I, what I specialize is I cross-reference, which is, to me, I love it because I can say, oh, they got this, they got their north. So I kind of already know I gather all the information because I've studied and then I know exactly where they're stuck where they may not be aware some people are not even aware and the way I, I say it, it's like I'm just giving you a guide it's up to it's not telling them uh -huh. what they need to do but this is what you may be prone to be doing or maybe f your fallback it's like I was born an example my son is 29 degrees if I would have been born seven hours later I would have been a Gemini so I feel like I have a PhD in a Taurus and I'm, I have a Gemini soul, even though yeah. I'm still a Taurus. Because a lot of people are like, you have this Gemini. So to me, you take another Taurus born May 1st, they're in the early, they're still embodying what it means to be a Taurus. So it's so individual. It's, it's just, over, it's like people don't realize it's not the day. It's yes. so many layers of like, even I like to do the grandparents because oh. you skip a generation like going back, how was your, do you know anything? It's interesting you talk about the grandparents. Do you know anything? Like you, doing the research of where you came from, what was the story told? Uh -huh. Because you have, when you're, when you're pregnant, when, your mom, when, you, when you're in your mom's womb, 88 days before you're born, you're already getting the transmission. That's yeah. the blueprint genetic of, was your mom happy? With, who knows what she was going through? Yeah. And then all that, it, epigenetics, it comes, uh, so you're, it's human design, it's astrology, it's the way you were raised, it's your DNA. So there's a lot of factors. It's not just the stars. It's like a whole layer of so much information that you carry around that you may not even be aware of. That's so cool. Because you're just walking around thinking, oh, we're all like robots. But it's changing. Yeah. Like this year and many years. Another thing I wanted to talk about, in 2027, there's going to be a shift. Wow. of how we're going as humans. The incarnation cross that I talked about, you're born, so the earth has an incarnation cross and oh, it lasts cool. about 400 years. The last one, 1600, was about incarnation cross of planning, building governments, institution, police system, structure, planning, that was a the theme. Well, that ends in 2027. And we're going into the sleeping phoenix. We're going into an individual, like who are you? and not being codependent on the government. That's why it's wow. breaking down. It's not so much on the political. The earth is, you can't, it won't sustain the vibration mm -hmm. of what's going on. There's a shift of being, it's, it's the 55 and the 59, which is all about freedom and not being a victim. We go to the store, the food's there. Everything is at access. Mm -hmm. We may be going back to having our own gardens or bartering with people and exchanging, like being more, a little bit more primal, but more individual, not so much dependent on a system. And self-reliant. And yes. self-reliant, yeah. yeah. where the kids are sent off to school, and it's, gonna, it's shifting already, where it's more about being a freak. Yeah. Like my design is made to be a freak. Like th this guy I met, he's in Spain, he gave me a four hour reading, and I was like, he goes, Lynette, you're here to be a bitch. And I said, no. what? He goes, yes. <laughs> you try to be so polite. Yeah. He goes, people see it. Right yeah. when you show up, they see this, your energy provokes people. And sometimes you piss them off or sometimes, and you try to do this conditioned behavior. Oh, I need to behave this yeah. way. And your body is emitting, your body's already telling me who you are, but you can speak. But then if it doesn't match up, there's the yeah. So that's what it is. It's like energetically what the story I've been told, Jehovah's Witness, yeah. seen and not be, you know, just be the good girl. Yeah. 
that's so, isn't it wild? Be a freak. I was so like, what? <laughs> so for your freaky future, what uh, what do you see coming up for you, and what what do you know is coming up for you, and what do you hope? I'm hoping that more people that are also in the healing or mm -hmm. want to awake collaborate together. There's enough for everyone. It's not, you do, everybody's unique in their own. Mm -hmm. If somebody does acupuncture, somebody does therapy, everybody's so unique. There's no really competition, yeah. it's, you know? It's about um, getting together and really helping those that are in need to. There are people that don't have the resources because poverty conscious or, and, and there's enough money. If you close your eyes, money is like, what money is, is just energy. Yeah. And there is enough, but we're told that, you know, the scarcity or money doesn't grow on trees. So all this, so really targeting the people that don't have to give, mm -hmm. like in the Jewish tradition, tikkun, uh, tikkun olam, I always have it in my hashtag. It's like making the world a better place than yeah. what you left it. And you don't have to have a lot to give. That's when you give, even if you have the last dollar, that's when you really give. Yeah. So what can everybody contribute? How can we collaborate? Kansas City is a great community. Nice. There's something special here. I have my Jupiter line here, by the way. So yeah. it's about um, learning and abundance uh -huh. and other cultures. So I would love to see, and I would love to collaborate with other people that have that want to do the same thing in different, you know, everybody speaks their own language or d does yeah. their own thing. So if our listeners and viewers wanted to know more and maybe even get a reading, how can they find you um, online? And Well, right now I'm in the process of creating my website. Oh, and because funny. I'm an emotional, what you call an emotional manifesting generator, it my I never know what <laughs> it's an ongoing <laughs> yeah because I'm, I'm very like I don't have clarity in the now so yeah. for me it may take a little longer than somebody who, like Giovanna she'll yeah. decide on something this is it and yeah she'll go with it for me I just love honoring my design yeah. to making smarter decisions so once my website's done but for now Instagram would be and what's your handle tribal Venus all right well, you've heard it here that you can actually, you can get your chart read. You can you can sit down. You can actually have an experience with this incredible person. Um, I encourage you, though, first to first figure out the time of day you were born. <laughs> know that. And look into your past history. So when you come and sit with Lynette, you can, you can give her information so she can give you the best reading possible because i do believe that you have a real gift i'm really excited to see what unfolds and god the website once that's up <laughs> maybe i won't see you again because right now i feel like everybody is is looking for something i can't thank you enough for your time today i could talk to you for hours and i know that i'm going to be seeing you now I'm like very curious and I'm going to be digging for my birth chart right now. I'm like, oh, where is it at? But other than that, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. And um, thank you for listening. And please, if you're listening, please get on YouTube, hit subscribe, subscribe, please subscribe and uh, follow us please on Instagram. And you'll, my website is going to be up i think next week i'm super excited it's up now but i'm not telling anyone yet so anyway have the best day and um i'll see you guys a little later bye